I've spent years developing what I'm about to show you. I'm going to give you a four-step recipe to answer any question on the planet that works every time, almost every time. <laughs> there, there, there are times where this won't work, and it's called handling distractions. I'm going to deal with those challenging people, the resenters, the experts, the quiet types, the hecklers, the know-it-alls, all those folks. We're going to handle those in a minute. But everybody else, this is going to work for them if you do this right. Now, before I unveil this to you, I want you to know that there's three things you need to do when you answer a question. You need to field them, respond to them, and then you need to conclude it. So fielding is the first thing. How do I even field your questions? The first thing I'm going to suggest, before I give you the four step in the field is, is this. When you answer questions, or when you field questions, you need to look at the asker the whole time that they ask. Right now I'm not looking at anyone all the whole time, just moving my eyes around. But if somebody asks me a question, I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at this person the entire time they ask this question. And why would I do that? Why is this powerful? Show you. I want to show I'm listening. But what is, what is the rest of my body doing as I'm looking at this person? Did I move my rest of my body? What did I move? If I look at this person or that person or this person, what am I moving? I'm moving my head on the swivel. Why do I not want to do this? Because this shuts the whole side of this room down. So I want my body to everybody, and I want to look at this person. So the number one step, or number one rule when you get questions is that you say, well, what's your question? And you look at the person, and you say nothing. Now, before you, ask, you get the questions, how do you even get people to ask questions? I get a lot of people saying, nobody asks questions in my room, Jason. What do I do? What did I say you should do? How do you get them to ask questions? What do you say? Not do you have any questions, because there's a yes or no. What questions do you have? And, and you don't want to end just on what questions do you have. You want to ask one more thing. What questions do you have about topic X? And how many seconds should you wait? Okay, so here's the steps. You finish a cool topic. You say, I just taught you this, 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 this. And then you say, what questions do you have about topic X? And then you stop. And you just move your head around confidently and calmly and look. And in about six seconds, someone will ask a question. And then you look at the person and you say, what's your question? And you listen, you listen, you listen, you listen. And now we're ready for the steps. This is how you respond. First thing you do is you paraphrase the question every time. Now, I want to debate this with some people. Some people will say to me, seriously, paraphrase every time? I disagree, they would say. I'm going to give you a lot of reasons right now why you should do this. I don't usually do this much theory for one thing, but I want you to really understand how important this is. If I paraphrase a question, what's one positive benefit you can tell me? I get it right, which means they, they feel cared about. What's another one? They know I'm listening. What's another one? Everyone else can hear it. What's another one? It buys time. Has anyone ever watched professional poker players? What do they do if they're really good? When they have a hand that's really good. Do they go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Do they look at it and go, oh! But what do most presenters do? They give it away, even before they've answered. Barry Bonds said that his father would actually give him the signals of what the pitches were going to be before he would hit the ball. As he's on deck, his dad would call him up from home and tell him what's going to come. He'd say, if the pitcher does this with his right ear, he's going to throw a curveball. There's people who analyze pitchers in baseball and look at their body language and facial expressions for the smallest little things to determine if a fastball or a changeup's coming. They do the same thing in poker. And they do the same thing with you. I'll give you an example. The most common thing that presenters do when they know the answer is they don't repeat it. They just answer it immediately. The most common thing they do when they don't know the answer is they repeat it. I'm telling you that you need a poker face. You need to repeat everything 
so that they have no idea what your hand is. You cannot ever let them know that you don't know an answer. And I'm going to give you a recipe that never will. No one will ever know in your rooms if you follow this recipe whether you know an answer or not, ever. You will always look like you know the answer. <laughs>